So this conversation now is machines become increasingly capable. Tasks are considered to require human intelligence are often removed. We speak about the transfer of information demonstrated by machines as opposed to intelligence displayed by humans or animals known as artificial in intelligence. So let's now explore the future of AI in Africa. Let's speak now to Angela Stofile, Microsoft South Africa Government and Corporate Affairs Lead. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Stofile. I mean, there's, you know, concerns that machines Machines may have started replacing people already and, you know, talk about some of the skills that could be required when it comes to artificial intelligence in the future, when it comes to, you know, some of those who may be needed for the world of work. So how should businesses be approaching the reality that is artificial intelligence? Well, good evening, ma'am, and uh, good evening to your listeners. You know, the question that you're asking me almost reminds me of uh, pre-1994, when ESCOM wanted to electrify the country, especially in the rural areas, and you had a lot of resistance in the rural areas where farmers were saying that, uh, you know, the electricity, these lights are keeping their bulls awake and their bulls unable to do what they're supposed to do. Now, fast forward and look at now. I mean, electricity is really a, it's a core need. We, mm. we cannot do without electricity. So in the same way, if you apply that analogy, when you then look at technology equally, I mean, we speak about the fourth industrial revolution. Some people argue that we are already in the fifth industrial revolution. Now, as a country, we certainly, and as business, we certainly can't afford to be left behind. Um, you talk about skilling. You know, I always make the example that says that do not be concerned about artificial intelligence. Be concerned about the person who's got the skills to use artificial intelligence because they've got the competitive edge. So it's not the technology. It's how you actually use the technology. And it becomes something that is uh, become quite important. And, and what would you say then, especially on that, because the skilling is going to be quite an important one. And as you say that the person that is using it is the, the crucial one here. So what are some of, you know, the skills that you are seeing in the future that someone who's going to be using this needs to have? Look, um, it's, it's definitely, you know, when you look at the, the artificial intelligence, uh, you know, stuff that becomes important, you look at just the opportunities around cybersecurity. Um, when you just look at um, in terms of the potential jobs, the new jobs and new roles that are going to be created by cybersecurity, equally that, uh, that becomes important. I mean, just to maybe give uh, some context uh, mm. around that. When you look at here in South Africa, I mean, we had, I think it was last year, the year before, you had the Department of Justice, which was hacked. Um, and all systems were down. You had TransUnion. So there was a lot of companies where there were cybersecurity breaches. Now, from a country point of view, if we had the required and requisite skills, we would not be on, you know, probably the, the top 10 from a target list uh, globally um, from, from a cyber attack point of view. So those are the skills that definitely are going to be needed. I mean, from a country point of view, uh, we've got a policy document called the uh, the future skills uh, strategy, um, if uh, and I'm paraphrasing it, right? Uh, the digital and future skills strategy. Now that strategy, which is uh, which have, which came out of the FYR commissioned by the president, really details what skills are needed for the future and how, as a country, we should actually be looking at those skills and what we should be doing currently to be able to leverage the skills that are needed. And, you know, there's, there's often concern about whether or not the continent is not get, getting left behind. Are we even, um, you know, speaking in, in, on an equal footing here? But uh, are we almost out of time, so I cannot let you go before I ask you this. I mean, there are concerns around, um, you know, fake news, so as well as what is real and how this distinction here yeah, when one uses artificial intelligence, you know, it might be not so much of a distinction and maybe difficult to tell. So how would we then be able to determine between what is fake and what is real? <laughs> Look, that, that's a very tough question, right? And, and I say it's tough because it does not depend on, on individual or, you know, an individual organization. Mm. If you look at countries globally, what happens is that you've got cyber response centers, an example, where you've got a, a number of departments, which, for an example, in this country, you'd have the equivalent of the state security, you'd have Department of Justice, so you'd have a classic approach where they're able to go and use the tool that we have, artificial intelligence, and and and, and to be able to, um, you know, to differentiate. But just from a South Africa point of view, I mean, we've got the Cyber Crimes Act, which speaks around fake news and the fact that there is criminal and financial liability and penalties for people that that perpetuates the fake news, especially if they're going to do immeasurable harm. 
Angela, there's one question that I'm sure you knew was going to come. And, and, and it's one question I've been dying to ask someone in this particular space. The devices we have, I mean, one is sitting right here. They've got this AI-powered technology, and we can talk to them when we are prompting them to make phone calls while we're driving. But it does look like sometimes, even when we're not using them, we're saying stuff, and then next thing, your algorithms are now geared up in a way of everything you've just said to somebody privately. Are these phones listening to us? Look, uh, that would be a question that you'd ask, uh, you know, state security. I wouldn't know, right? <laughs> so for us, I mean, from a Microsoft point of view, we speak about AI for good and ethical AI. And that's exactly to, pre to prevent those kind of, of instances. So, you know, I'm quite clear from a Microsoft point of view when you speak about the ethical nature of how we apply AI. But in terms of from a country level, listen, our state security mm. and ask the security cluster. Mm. And, 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 and I mean, I'm sure it's going to be quite important, though, to also, as you say, something very important, the ethics around this, because that is another conversation altogether that does arise from something like that, potentially. No, absolutely. I mean, just to, again, give you a simple example, right? So, um, um, you know, AI is programmed, so the programs uh, are done by individuals. And so if I've got a subjective bias, how I program that will result in some kind of discrimination, whether it's race or whatever the case may be. And so ethical AI then is there to make sure that those things are minimized and we apply AI in an ethical manner. But that applies to all, um, you know, all technologies. It's not just about, for, um, about AI, but it's just that, of course, uh, you know, you're talking to us about, uh, about AI, but it applies to all technologies. So, Andile, you've convinced me I'm not going to be like those people pre-1994. I'm now migrating there. So, you've convinced me. Thank you very much for your time this and afternoon. And please make sure that whatever you migrate to, it's Microsoft. It's got a Microsoft uh, <laughs> underlying technology. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Do appreciate it. That was Andile Stofile, Microsoft South Africa government and uh, corporate affairs lead. Of course, we talk about something very serious, artificial intelligence. And uh, we'll continue, of course, to monitor this because is there's so much talk around the unions you think about what they have to say so there's so much um, around this